This is the Carlton Podcast. Here's your host, Tony Moclair. Hello and welcome to the Carlton Podcast. It is episode three. Mitch Robinson is uh, unavailable because his girlfriend is due to give birth any day now. That's right. There will be the spawn of Mitch Robinson alive and well and living in the world. Just contemplate a world with another half a Mitch Robinson in it. Um, not unrelated to that, but not, a, not explicitly related to that, is an apology I do have to make for uh, an inappropriate comment made by Romo last week. Uh, it was an off-the-cuff comment. He didn't mean to offend anyone at all. He is a great man. In his place, though... An old favourite of the Carlton podcast, an old, well, what would you, what would you co-host? The great Michael Jamison. Founder, founder, co-host, whatever you like. Well, what would you, how would you put it? Founder. Oh, you were Creative a founding co yeah. yeah. You were the ideas man behind it all. Yep. All it's great to have you back. It's great to be here. Finally get underway. How are you, Jamo? I'm very well, mate. Very well. All right. Well, we're going to get to the Richmond post-mortem in a second, but joining us, our very special guest today... All the way from WA, Mr. Kane Lucas. How are you, Kane? I'm good, thank you. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. What have you, um, what have you been told about the, the Carlton podcast? Have you clearly been forewarned, I hope, about what to expect? Uh, well, obviously you don't remember me, but I was on here last year. So. Of course, I do remember. No, I'm talking about the 2014 version. <laughs> yeah, I think it's a lot better than Gemmo's junk that was yeah. in existence and shut down due to lack of audience, but... Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, we'll give it another crack. As I said, it's great to have you back on the Carlton Podcast. <laughs> here we go. Um, very memorable all right. person. Oh, the laughing stops now because I've got to bring up Thursday night's game. 62,000 people. It was a great crowd. Certainly much better than the 24,000 that saw uh, the Blues go down to Port Adelaide. Jamo, what happened? Any, give me a specific question, mate. Well, okay. Uh, Richmond dominated the first half. What happened in the rooms at half time? Because Carlton came out with a, a much more. Well, the skills were a lot better in the third quarter. It was a lot more focused. The style of play was a lot more efficient. We were moving the ball a lot better. What happened in yeah, the half time break? Tony, the disappointing thing is you know, Mick didn't come out with a new plan at half time. That was the plan, you know, at the start of the game, and we just failed to, you know, capitalise and, and, you know, just even get that game plan going early we knew that Richmond liked to play a, a plus one back and I think that was Troy Chaplin for most of the first half and he just dominated you know in the air because I think we lacked composure going forward I think we failed to hit some some mm. short easy targets and just and just blazed away so after half time as it you know it's probably ob probably obvious for all those watching we took our time moved the ball with a little bit more efficiency and and scored more heavily so Kane what was it like in the rooms at the end of the game because it was a chance that went begging and it's great to really put Richmond away, we do, you know, have the wood on them. It's it's always great to beat them. What was it like in the rooms? Yeah, I think it was a little bit disappointing. Um, the boys knew we, we blew a pretty big chance to, to come back and grab the game. Um, I think on the field you could feel they were getting a bit shaky themselves. So, mm. um, yeah, it was just disappointing that we couldn't come through with a win. Jamo, um, a noted backman, but you had oh. a shot on goal. Yeah. What were you doing down that end of the ground in the first place? You'd followed your opponent down, but then what was he doing down that end yeah, of the ground? Yeah, look, I think from memory it was the latter stages of a quarter, so I think they were trying to get their numbers you know, behind the ball just yeah. to, to shore things up and slow things up and make sure we didn't score. And there was a quick kick out. I was sheepdogging, steady, composed. Yeah, and as just, always. Yeah, look, yeah. I'm a, the way I put it tone this week is I'm a, I'm a great goal kicker out of luck. Yeah. I think I've had... Maybe eight shots on goal in my career. I hit the post six times. So, I watched it go over my head, and it, part of me wished that it wouldn't go in because I'd never hear the end of it. So, <laughs> in a way, it was kind of a good thing. Are you on I, the field? When she said you weren't even on then, were you? No, I was on. Okay, I was yeah. last year the third and quarter. I, I will put my hand up and say I did celebrate. Yes, so did I. Can I tell you, yeah. I was out of my seat. Okay. Well, yeah, I'm glad I had some support. Yeah, you did. But it was it was very disappointing. But um. It's usually about two years in between shots, so I'll, I'll get ready for the ne I'll get ready for the next one. Now uh, we're currently without uh, Juddy Kratzo, Andrew Walker. What what difference do you think that has been uh, a factor in the loss of both games to Port and Richmond? Uh, look, I'd like to say that we would have won if we had all those three players out there. I don't I, I don't think that's the case. I think we've been we've been beaten by you know better teams on the night. Certainly going to be a huge advantage having them back in. We'll get walks back definitely this week. Obviously missing through suspension. 
Kratzo is he's playing VFL or AFL, so mm. he'll be playing this week. Um, it just depends, you know, what he feels confident doing. And then Juddy, as as we heard last week, still a couple away. But to get Andy, the both Andy's back. Hopefully, it's it's another boost of leadership out there. They're both in the group. Obviously, huge work rates for both of them, so it gives us some extra run, which I think we've probably been lacking. So hopefully, sooner, you know, sooner rather than later, we've got all those three back on the side. Kane, when when easy set shots go back, Jared Waite, uh, Robbie Warnock, Michael Jamison, when when that does happen, how how much effect does that have on the rest of the team? Um, yeah, it's just it, it, like we said, we it's just um, goals that we should get, and um, it's a bit deflating at the time. You know, we work so hard to get an opportunity to score on goal, and then easy shots go begging. So it's a bit of a deflator, but. Um, the boys have made a conscious effort to work on it this week and hopefully we can kick a little straighter next week. Yeah. what? Uh, how does the club actually address that during the week? Do you just tie Jared Waite to a goalpost <laughs> with a chain and leave him there for 14 hours? Yeah, it's a pretty good question. I mean, everyone's got their own individual routines and, and what goes through in their heads when they're lining up for goals. So it's hard to pinpoint a solution for, for 44 guys at a club. So I think everyone's just got to stick to their own routine and, and try perfect it as much as they can and um yeah kick the goals so the uh, mentally how are both of you going into a very big game next week oh look you do you do try and keep it you know keep it similar because every game's worth four points but yeah. it is it's always is a big build-up against Essendon it's, I think it's it's born out of the fact that when I first arrived at the club guys like Sticks and Rats are around who I think have a genuine hatred for for the bomber, so yeah. it's hard not to get that that feeling when you know we are playing them. That and the fact they beat us twice last year, I think um, you know I'd be I'm pretty keen to get one back over them. Yeah, um, saying that they were a, a much different team last year. Yes, okay, and of course you want a big crowd, obviously. Yeah, Sunday night game, which yeah. is a bit unusual. I don't think we've played one for for a fair for a while. week. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Port Adelaide was Sunday night, so was I didn't play that. There oh, you go. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure. Is it, is it? I don't know if it's school holidays or something, but. It, Sunday night certainly a yeah. it's a tough one I think for the the average punter to get along to yeah you know some of us you got to get kids ready for school and you know That's ready right. for work and things like that so it'll be interesting to see what the crowd does I know it's a great raider TV wise for the for the league but we'll yeah see, we'll see what shows up you'd wonder if that had anything to do with it but I, I wouldn't want to be cynical <laughs> um, it, it, what does it mean to you an Essendon game this is a great rivalry and this game is against Essendon it's almost like a, a rivalry game on steroids you could say do you what, uh, how is it for you Kane coming to the club and then having this do you almost have to kind of invent a hatred for Essendon or do you just <laughs> kind of soak it up through the walls at the place oh I wouldn't say you'd invent it but yeah you certainly buy into the the hatred um my debut was against Essendon and I still remember what what that was like so um yeah it's a pretty big um a pretty big day so yeah we'll see what happens well we just want to win Jamo, uh, deputy vice leadership group <laughs> member personality. Yep. Yep. Uh, you um, being a, a senior player at the role, uh, I'm sorry, senior player at the club, when somebody like Dylan Buckley, who had a great game on Thursday night, that was, as a supporter, really exciting to see. Um, uh, how do I put this? Do you almost have to manage his expectations? Are there people at the club who say, great game, let's have, you know, three, four more in a row? Is it almost like you have, you've got to... I guess not let him get away f- with himself, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I know exactly where you're getting at, and and typically you would, um, because you know these are often the, the, the you know the games are the hardest for those sort of players after coming off a great a great game, and it's almost is like his first game because he I think he played one last year. And yeah, he kicked a goal with his first kick, and he was a forward, so it was very different. But you know, I had a word to deal that lasted 15 you know seconds this morning, and I just said this is the hardest week, mate. So do exactly the same as you did last week. Yep. Because I think with his, no doubt he's going to get a lot of you know exposure this week and a lot of compliments and he's going to have friends texting him and saying mm. you know great game and things like that and it's probably easy to so get caught up in that but knowing Dill and the, the kid he is and how hard he does work day to day he shouldn't have too much of an issue of backing it up. Troy Menzel got some good raps last week. How's he been? Yeah, Menz is great. I, I love having Menz in the team and when he you know started as sub the week before and, and then got a full game this week and. He's only going to get better and better when he builds his tank. He came into the club of someone who you know, wasn't one of those naturally fit guys, but you could see he had the class and, and the skill. So when he gets his hands on it, or something always comes comes with it. So you know, the fitter he gets, the more ball he'll get. 
So now both of those uh, blokes will be playing this week. Is that right, Kane? Yeah, definitely. I'd presume so. They both had pretty good games on the weekend, so they've earned their spot this week, I think. Okay. Um, well, look, uh, who who do we have to shut down to win the game, in your opinion, Jamo? And I'll ask you that question too, Kane. Well, no doubt Watson. Um, he's had a terrific year last year, and he's he started this year, you know, exceptionally well as well. I think he's had you know two best on ground, so. Guys like him, Goddard is another one who you know can turn a game, you know his own foot, and his touches you know result in something pretty special most times. And the third one I'd say is probably Heppel. So they're the three that I think we'll, we'll have a pretty big focus on throughout the week. Yeah, Heppel stood up last time for him and was played very well, so can't let him do it again. Who do you expect to match up on Kane? Uh, good question. Who, do, who the VFL got this week? Uh, that's a good question. Who do they? Round one VFL. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm not uh, too sure. I go, well, Edit. it's a bit hard to say if the, if the team hasn't been announced, I guess, but um, it's probably a... <laughs> Edit. <laughs> Let's keep it civil, you two. Um, uh, we should point out, too, that Dylan Buckley uh, got a nomination for the AFL Rising Star for round two. He told me um, it was a year too late. He said if he wasn't sub last year, he would have got it last year. So. Oh, good. Well, that chat you had <laughs> yes, is doing it's wonders it's there. <laughs> yes, Fantastic. you've certainly been able to rein in that ego there. Um, now, it was Jeff Garlett's 100th game. He tossed the coin. How was Jiffy at the end of the game? Yeah, he was a bit, a bit disappointed, a bit flat like the rest of the boys, but um, can't shy away the fact that it was a great achievement. The first uh, Cullen player in the Guernsey, number 38, to reach 100 games, so... Um, it's been a long journey, but a good journey for him, and I'm sure he's got plenty more games to to go. It seems like an odd question. But you've had plenty from me over the, over the yeah over the course of the journey, Jamo. Yeah. Is his name already up on the locker? I haven't checked to be honest, but I um I was the first number forty last year. To <laughs> yes, we do remember. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Could um, you talk us through that? The number, the name going up. Yeah, or? yeah, just how momentous that is, and how momentous it is for the first number forty. That it was every it's other forty will follow in your way. Terrific achievement. Obviously, no one's been out of a you know achieve that in yeah. the number forty jumper. So it's obviously carries a lot of weight. I think I passed the game record at about thirty three games. So yeah, do you <laughs> think maybe go. Dylan Buckley <laughs> needs to have a word to you about the week you're having? <laughs> yeah, possibly. Yeah. No. Um, yeah, um, let's go back to your question. I'm not sure when it goes up. Last last week, it was last year for me, it was pretty quickly, so it's probably up there already. All right, okay. So, uh, I mean, that, that is a great honour. How many games are you at at the moment, Kane? I'm at 36. Okay. Yeah, so take away my sub games, I'll probably go down to 15 or something. <laughs> <right>. <laughs> <laughs> Who's game record in your jump locker? Uh, i got Kenny Hunter's up there. He's on the my locker. Yeah, great uh, number nine, yeah. a few others, but I'll have to go down and check. But yeah, there's yeah, a few in there. You, of course, were the first player ever subbed. Yeah, it's a good trivia answer in a few years. Yeah. First player ever to get subbed on, so it's not as good as 100 games, but I'll take it. Would that go up on a locker, do you think, Jamo? You would have thought so, at least somewhere. Yeah, I pretty, think it should. Pretty good achievement. Yeah, no think, one else will match it. Yeah, I mean, that, as you say, that's going to win somebody a lot of money in a pub trivia contest one night. <laughs> um, who would you, Speaking of which, who would you want next to you or at your table out of the playing group at a pub trivia night? Present company obviously excluded. Yes. Everyone, be at home everyone being tends to say Gemmo is the smartest at the club, but... Who is? Gemmo. They, they tend to say that, but he hasn't won my vote yet. Yeah. Um, who would I want to sit next to? I reckon Tommy Bell's got a... Oh, a okay. pretty, that, is, that is a horrific <laughs> No, answer. hear me out. <laughs> oh. it, Hear me out. He's very... This com- is about which, which club to go to on a Friday <laughs> night. That is the worst end I've ever heard. Common sense-wise, he's not great. But right. I reckon he'd know a Don't few... Don't take him to trivia. <laughs> well done, Kane. He'd have a few, like... Uh, uh, trivia is a lot of out-there questions, and I reckon he's got a few... You okay. Know, he's got a few facts that not many people other know, so... Especially if surfing came up as a surfing, topic. Surfing, skating. He knows yeah. a lot about sports. He reckons he's pretty big on music, so... Yeah. Uh, yeah, blonde mustaches. He'd do very well if there was a crew cuts. Blonde master. Yeah, master. Okay, <laughs> Jamo, who would you have at trivia night? Um, it would be out of Judd, Carazzo. Ah, oh, so you've got to be in the leadership group, do you? Yeah, to wow. really see. That, very pretentious. Bit, yeah, they got a bit mad with power, we're don't they? Hang around the leadership, you see. Yeah, it's ooh. not the true people's choice. Yeah, yeah. finish. You till you finish. <laughs> no, I remember when you were so a man of the just, people, just, just like, like us. Just like forgetting came, that came, came from the rookie list. Yeah, hundred games, and now he doesn't even remember where he comes from. Can you believe it? Chris isn't in a leadership group. It's another thing you've forgotten, obviously today, Tony. <laughs> We'll edit that out. (laughs) (laughs) This podcast is about me and making me look as good as possible. 
It's a full-time job. Um, all right. Well, now, Jamo, since you've been away, yes, we've actually rejigged the podcast a little. We have, um, unlike when you were here, we have a thing now um, on the podcast Swish. called Listeners. Um, <laughs> Swish. So, so they, they like segments, okay? Yep. Um, so the segment that we do, we, uh, you'll like this, Kane. We, we had a segment called Educating Mitch Robinson. That would have taken a while. That, that was pushing proverbial uphill. <laughs> Mitch's, so, Mitch's child's going to be the only baby born that's got an IQ greater than his father. <laughs> <laughs> and by a long way. <laughs> He's a good man and we love Mitch Robinson on the Carlton Podcast. Yes. Um, and that's not true. Now, so <laughs> what this is, is basically a, it's a spot quiz I give you uh, facts about a player in the playing group, yep. and you have to guess as early as possible the identity of that person. Okay. Okay? So we were talking trivia. So this is just current players? Yes, this is okay. a current player. Sweet. Not a former player, not yep. a playing great, okay. not uh, somebody who's played in your number. What's my buzzer noise, or is there no buzzers? Yeah. Just one by one? Oh. Yeah, just your first names will do. All right. <laughs> um, are you back yourself here, Gemma? Mr. Leadership Group. Sure. <laughs> we'll see how well he knows those who play under him. Where you've done this research. But okay, I'm looking forward to it. Okay, the great Mads McClure does it. Good on you, Mads. Yeah. All right, <laughs> are we ready? We both, I'm going to let Kane go first if there's okay. anything that comes up. So I get the first chance to answer it. All yes, right. you do. So Let's question go. number one. I made my debut for Carlton in 2009 during round one's clash against Richmond. That would be, I reckon, Mitch Robinson? That is incorrect. He did make his debut in 2009, though, didn't he? Against Frenchman? Kicked uh, three goals. So, yes. 16 possessions. He told me about it last week. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, how did he go last week? How many posses? Who? Robbo. No idea. Yeah, 16 sounds about right. Can I have another guess? Was there three debutants? Jeff Gale. I've got one of them. Jeff AJ. Gallet. No, Aaron but Joseph. it's not the person we're after because there's a... I'll, I'll ask you the follow-up question. Jeffrey Garlett. Okay, Kane Lucas. Jeffrey Garlett. Follow-up question. Jeffrey Garlett. <laughs> Jeffrey Garlett. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know anything you about showbiz and about drawing out suspense? <laughs> Hang on, I'm not happy with this. You can't ask an open question where there's several answers to. Yeah, exactly. So Thank you. I at least got one right. Okay, you know what? I'm awarding it to you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. It is Jeffrey Garland, who, before embarking on his AFL career, played for Swan Districts in the WAFL. There you go. Well, we've got three Holmes. of them, actually. We've got Chris Sharon. Yeah, played a follow-up, so it's... Yeah. Oh. Who did that and that? Jeff Gallup. Yeah. There All right. Well done, Kane. He weighs 75 kilos. He does. He was Wet nominated for an AFL Rising Star Round 19 match in 2010. Last year, he topped Carlton's goal-kicking leaderboard with a total of 43 goals. On Thursday night, he played his 100th game. He is... Got it yet? Who came the first name? He might get it. <laughs> right. I think we know the answer to that. Very unjust trivia <laughs> question. Jamo, the first round was a split round. Uh, that kind of tends to mess with players' preparation and and just rhythm, basically. How did you cope with that very strange week, ten days, or whatever it was? Um, yeah, I wasn't too bad. I think if you um if you go in with a good plan yourself in terms of how you're gonna you structure up your routine because we had a, a 12 or 13 day break, so it was quite strange in that aspect. But if you go in and have a good plan and make sure you're not thinking about the next game you know, too quickly, if you can try and just recover and, and get your body right for that first, you know, first five days, mm-hmm. and then you go into the, to the week like normal. So I think if you, if you make sure you've got a, a good mindset and a good plan in place, then it wasn't too bad for myself. What about you, Kane? Yeah, VFL had a good practice match that week. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Who were you playing? Uh, Sandringham. Okay. Yeah. Actually, and we didn't have a good week. Well, in the VFL, I mean, are there, are there some... Is it like the AFL in that some clubs are kind of... Some clubs are just horrible? Um, yeah, well, not necessarily. Um, the standard's pretty good. There's like... There's the AFL-listed clubs, obviously, they can't fit all the AFL players into the AFL squad. So there's a lot of good players in the VFL teams. Um so, what was the question again? Oh, just, just, I mean, I, the last VFL game that I went and saw, which I've talked about on the podcast before, was was going to see Jared Waite when he was getting back into fitness. Yeah. And uh, I always rave about the VFL because you go along, we could stand outside the quarter time huddle. Yeah. Um, 
Teague was coaching at the time, so that was exciting. So I, I like the cut of his jib when he played here. <laughs> um, you can drink full-strength beer. You're actually trusted with full-strength beer, so you're treated like a grown-up. And the standard of, of the play is excellent. It's fantastic. Yeah, it's a little bit more relaxed atmosphere. You can have the, the full-strength beers and that. But, yeah, there's always um, usually a good contest between the teams. So, yeah, it's a good standard, and hopefully the Northern Blues can um, do a bit better than last year this year. So your mindset... It, when you're in the VFL team, is to play yourself back into contention, obviously, to play the seniors? Uh, yeah, to a degree. I mean, you can't be solely focused on yourself and, and all about you just trying to get up to the to AFL level. Of course, that's an overall goal, but you've still got to play to the team structures and and um, recognise you're playing with 21 other guys. So um, you've got to play your role and, and that'll come, I think. It comes if you're, if you're doing the right thing with your teammates and playing your role, then they're going to recognise that, the selectors, and Mick watches a few of the games. So, um, yeah, that just comes with, with doing the right thing. How do you go actually establishing structures or playing structures in the VFL team if the lineup changes as continuously as it does? Yeah, it's a pretty uh, dynamic changing team. There's always guys in and out. Um, but, yeah... You, I think most of the guys are used to. Most of the young guys have played a fair few um, VFL games and used to the changing teams and changing lineups. But um, like I said, there's 22 players out there, and when you go out, you just play footy. So and, and the VFL and the AFL teams try and really mirror, you know, the same structures. So then when when guys do go back, it's not foreign to them for one, mm. and two, they're practicing the same thing that they're going to be expected of in the AFL. So that certainly helps as well. So it being in the leadership group as you are, Michael Jamison, is it like being on Survivor and you have immunity from the VFL? Is it like that? Or I've never seen Michael Jamison at a VFL game. No. Do you, do you watch VFL? You can no, wouldn't. There, there's people, no, there, <laughs> there's people there who don't read books. Yeah. There's, you know, there's people who work for a living. Uh, did you, there, how many VFL people, games did you play, Jemmo? How many VFL games did you play? You well, I started my footballing career in the VFL at North yep. Bar at Roosters and I played 20 odd games and then I spent yeah, the majority of my first year at, at the Carlton Football Club playing the fo- uh, playing VFL bar the five last games of the season so I've spent plenty of time at the VFL <laughs> Kane um, and I also get down there regularly three to four times every in two the months to, to watch the, um, the VFL boys the only games I don't get to really are the ones that conflict with the AFL schedule. So I, as enough, a leader, yeah. I, I really pride yeah. myself on getting down there and, and supporting the young defenders. That's why we're in the leadership group, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you take your girlfriend to the VFL? She's like a nagging foot, isn't she? You wouldn't take her to the VFL. <laughs> she's like a nagging foot. Um, no, but she's she's actually a, a Carlton supporter, a big yeah. Carlton family, so she gets along to most of the, um, the AFL games. I think she's got one number on her back when she goes to the VFL. She really? actually had to. Have, she actually used to have Ryan Hall hands number, which is oh yeah, hot lips. Yeah, great play. Well, that's a bad sign if you're going to call him hot lips. Hot um, lips, Hullahan from Mash. Come on, talks work with me here. Okay, no, I won't before my time, people. Tony. Oh, okay, right. No, right. Baby. Um, yeah, well, Hula then. We'll just go Hula. Um, Jamma, you've been dating her for a while. Where, where's the, uh, the ring where's on the, the finger? Commitment? Yeah, you've got to take um, her off the rookie list. <laughs> I do like the announcement. You've got to elevate her. <laughs> No rush for those sort of things, Tony. How long were you dating before you got engaged? Well, it was complicated. We dated, uh, we, uh, let's say, when I was in my early 20s and then mid-20s and then I made an honest woman of Kate in my early 30s. So 10 years after you first started dating? Yes. Okay. So but we've, three... there are other people in between. Oh, I've got, <laughs> I've got plenty, of time, plenty of time. She's only young, Tony. She's only 23. So. Oh, okay. Well, no rush then. Yeah, exactly. Okay. But then, you know, you, you want to, you know... Make the decision before she gets wise. <laughs> yeah, that's a very good point. So, um, and before, uh, has she ever said to you, if if you get dropped to the VFL, it's you're over? Out, she get- <laughs> Maybe. Um, um, yeah. Anyway, just a thought. Just something for her to consider. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Um, well, listen, we, uh, on behalf of all of us here, uh, Michael Jamison, Kane Lucas, we wish Robbo and his partner the very best of luck. Uh, and uh, Emma, we just hope uh, you come through it uh, just with a, uh, a beautiful, healthy, bouncing baby boy. We don't know the name. We know it's a boy, but we don't know what name. In, induced on Thursday at the Mac, so certainly by this time next week in the podcast, you'll know Robbo's son's name. Okay. Do you reckon, Kane, it'll be Jamo? Do you reckon he would call his son 
I wouldn't have thought so. No, no, no that wouldn't be it's, appropriate a gem, though, yeah. at all. Are you pitching much. for Kane at all? Have you been in his ear at all about? I wouldn't want a direct correlation to Mitch's kid. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll advertise a few other names. All right, you. no worries. Well, look, as I said, we wish them the very best of luck. It's a wonderful event, and uh, uh, it will be great to um, to see Robbo when he comes back after paternity leave, which you get as a footballer, I believe. <laughs> I hope not, because we will have half the list out within about four weeks. We've got that many due. But. So who, uh, who else? Keisha. Bootsma. Uh, and we've just had Judd. Just had Judd and, and Tui. There's only five, five little, little kids. That is extraordinary. That is a bumper crop for the father-son rule. So that's very exciting. Michael Jamison, thank you so much for coming back again and co-hosting the Carlton Podcast with me co-host is very generous but thank you very much for having me back Tony. Our special guest Kane Lucas good luck next week. Thank you hopefully remembering next time I'm on the show <laughs> Well 